Praise the Lord. Greetings to you all in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I'm very happy and blessed to be in your midst. As uh, Brother was saying, I was introduced to you by Pastor Korean, and uh, he calls me once in a while, and uh, his greetings to you too. Uh, I'm going to uh, request, as uh, Brother was saying, somebody to read the verses for me as I go through the scriptures. Uh, request that everybody be in prayer so that God will speak to each one of us. Amen? Amen. Amen. Yeah. Let's open our Bibles to 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. Lest somehow, as the serpent deceived you by his craftiness, so your minds may be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Let's close our eyes and pray. Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you, we praise you, and we glorify you that we are able to come to your presence, Lord. We pray that the same Spirit which wrote these words will remind me to speak so your children will be strengthened, blessed, delivered, and healed in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. I want to first of all thank uh, Brother Josh, Joshua Philip for inviting me over here. And uh, I had a very blessed time with the choir. Uh, the, mess, the, the choir was really good. I think Brother Stark is, is leading the choir. He did a great job. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, and I was happy to hear that uh, he's not satisfied. Amen. You know, in life, to improve, we should never be satisfied. So the moment you are satisfied means you're going down, right? Always in life we should have an urge that we should improve. So if you want to improve, you should always feel that whatever I'm doing is not enough. Especially when you're doing something for God, you should not be satisfied. Because we can do more, 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 how much more we can do is by the help of the Spirit. Let me get to the, uh, the, the topic that I was trying to preach today, or teach today to you. Over here, this is written by Paul. The letters to Corinthians was written by Paul. And before I say that, like, uh, I'm here alone, I, I have, my wife is at home, and I've got two kids, they're both in high school, and uh, I just wanted to introduce myself, and uh, I like, I was introduced, I did my high school in Kuwait, by the grace of God. <laughs> I did my studies, all my schooling in Kuwait, then I went back to India during the Gulf War, and I did my MBA back home in India, and was able to come over here. Then I did my theology in Trinity International University, that's TIU, based in Chicago. We have, I was in Florida, and we have a campus in Delhi, so I was able to do that. That's all about me. Anyway, now let's get to the word. Praise the Lord. Over here, this is a letter written by Paul. And Paul, whenever Paul writes a letter, he is right. The why do we write letters? Then something we have to communicate to the other person. That's the time we write letters. Over here, the same thing. Paul is writing letters to the church of Corinthians or he has written so many letters. All these letters he's writing to the churches so that when he understands that there are certain problems existing in the church, every letter he writes, he is addressing the problems in the church. So when he addresses the problem, when he studies the letters in depth, you will understand. Every letter he's addressing one or the other problem. And the best part of these letters is that if we study these letters, we will find the same problems existing in the churches today. Amen. That's the best thing about the scripture or the word of God. We don't need to go outside looking for solution to the problems in the church. All the problems of the church are already addressed by Paul in his letters. Amen. That is the great thing of the Holy Spirit. So if we study the letters in depth, you will understand that you will be able to solve any problem that we have inside the church. 
Over here, Paul is telling, Paul is a very strong man of God. And this man of God, who in the, in the letter, when he writes there at Romans, he says that, I'm not afraid of anything. Now, uh, I'll just read that part. Romans chapter 11, he, uh, he says that, uh, When he's, when he's about to die, he's, he says a few things. He says that he, he's not afraid of death, the sword, poverty, hunger, nakedness, any of these things. But when it comes to writing the letter to Corinthians, he's saying that, but I fear something. Right? Isn't that what he says? He's fearing that something is going to happen in the church. What is that? He says that, but I fear by any means the serpent in your translation is craftiness in mine it is beguiled Eve but Paul is afraid the same serpent which is cunningness beguiled Eve through subtlety so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ what is Paul trying to tell us? Paul is taking us, or giving us a flashback of what happened in the Garden of Eden. And he's telling the same way he was craftily, cunningly beguiled by the serpent. The same thing he will do inside the church today. Amen? I hope you understand what, what Paul is trying to tell over here. If you don't understand, I will take you through the memory lane of the Garden of Eden. Let's go to Genesis chapter 3 and start reading from verse 1 and we will see what happened in the Garden of Eden and uh, we, we will hope and pray that this will help you to understand what Christian life is, how we have to maintain our Christian life, especially today. Let's read from verse 1. Yeah. Now the serpent was more cunning. Than so we see over here that the serpent was more cunning than any other animal. Which the Lord God had made. So the serpent, I believe, probably, I'm just imagining, probably the serpent could walk, had two legs. I don't know. And this serpent was attractive to look at. Even today, the serpents are attractive, right? If some snake goes from here, our all our eyes will fall because the scales are so attractive. And the serpent was very cunning. Let's continue, yeah. And he said to the woman. Yeah, before we go there, in the Garden of Eden, Usually when I go to a new place, I always try to start with the first story of the Bible so that you will get to know me and I can get to know you. Amen. <laughs> so over here, usually when we have a garden, when we make a garden, any of us, we will usually have what? A fence around it, right? Naturally, there will be a fence. So I'm just imagining, these are imaginations. When God made the Garden of Eden, He had a fence around the Garden of Eden. And inside the Garden of Eden, I, who all were there? There was only three people in the Garden of Eden. Who were there? Adam, Eve, and God. There was nobody else. Adam, Eve, and God. And the serpent was not in the Garden of Eden. We should get that thing clear. Amen? And I believe this Garden of Eden was pretty big. I'm just putting the uh, imagination so that you really try to understand what happened inside the Garden of Eden. And then we will try to see how our Christian life and what happened in the Garden of Eden trying to relate that into our lives. So Adam and Eve are living in the Garden of Eden, God put everything under their control. God said, you have control over the birds, you have control over the fishes in the sea, 
you have control over every animal that walks by. And God was able to speak to the uh, gods, these animals were able to even, I believe, communicate with them, right? Or speak to them. How do we know that? Because when God told Noah to get all the animals into the ark, he was able to do that, right? How was he able to do that? Because his powers were already given to Adam and Eve, but they lost the powers when they were thrown out of the Garden of Eden. Amen. So God gave that power back to Noah when he was told to get all the animals into the ark. So I believe the man or Adam and Eve had the powers to talk, communicate, and do whatever. You know, make, make dogs jump, sit, and stand. You make many uh, animals do things. You make parrots talk. These are silly things we can do. But in those days, they really had control over everything. Amen? And what happened was that this Adam and Eve, husband and wife, I believe one day, Eve must have told Adam, because his garden of Eden is pretty big, and uh, must have told Adam, we'll do one thing. We'll go two different ways today. Let's go to the east of the garden. Let me go to the east of the garden and see what's happening over there. And you go to the west of the garden and see what's happening over there. In the evening, we will come back and we will see what happens. What all things you saw, you can discuss that with me. And I will discuss whatever I saw with you. And what happened was that as Eve was walking in the garden, she must have gone close to the fences. Like I said, the garden has a fence, right? And outside the fence there was somebody. Who was that? Who was that? The serpent. The serpent is not inside the fence. The serpent is outside the fence. And what happens is that and as Eve is walking by, Eve hears a voice from outside the fence. Luckily my wife is not here so I can make a joke. <laughs> you know, you tell any, any woman, or if I tell my wife, we lost 10 pounds, finish. She just lights up. <laughs> I believe the serpent did something to get Eve's attention. Amen. He used the same trick that we even used today, right? He said to Eve, Eve, what happened? You look in pain. What happened? Are you not eating all the food or the fruits from the garden? And he said, what are you talking about? I, I'm, I'm doing fine. I eat every fruit in the garden. You sure? You don't look like your face doesn't tell that. You know, like you read, serpent was very cunning. Praise the Lord. You need to understand that very clearly. And what happens is that Eve got into communication with the wrong person. I, I want everybody to understand. Be very careful when you're communicating with people who you don't know. Amen? Amen? Today we have these social networks, all the Facebook, Twitter, you name all these things. Most of the time you're communicating with people whom you don't know. You communicate with people you have not seen. And what happens is that that communication can mess up your complete life. I hope you understand what I'm trying to tell you. The same manner over here, what happened was that Eve started talking to serpent whom she should have never talked to. And, and this serpent started using his cunningness and started talking to Eve. And Eve, in the beginning, says that, Oh, I'm eating everything, I'm doing fine. And eventually, the serpent asks Eve, Did you really eat from that tree from the center of the garden? Eve said, No. Forget about eating, I'm not even allowed to touch it. Amen. And see what happens over there. Eve in the beginning is very strong in the word of God. And she's saying, forget about eating it, I'm not even allowed to touch it. And, and the serpent says, yes, this is why I said you're not, 
looking so good, we are, we are looking pale because that is the fruit which contains all the vitamins, multivitamin fruit tree, right? The tree which God has said not to, the fruit which God has said not to eat. And eventually what happens, so let's read that verse, yeah. And he said to the woman, yeah. as God created, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden. You know, you always remember when Satan talks to you, he never talks to you by telling lies, even though he is the father of lies. He will start with truth and he will mess up somewhere down the road. And he is asking to Eve, has, what is that? Has God indeed said? Has God indeed said? You shall not eat of, you shall not eat of that? Every tree of the garden. See, it starts by a question. Amen. Always remember, before you get messed up, everything starts with the question. Satan usually doesn't have the power to make us do anything. All he does is put a question mark. He will come from behind and ask you a question, why not? Right? Why not? Why not do that? Why not do this? Look at other people, they are doing fine by doing that. He starts with a silly question. And when and we start thinking about this question, oh yeah, why not? Then we ask ourselves, he starts with the question, why not? And then we end up asking the question, why not? And then what happens? Everything gets messed up. Satan asks the question and says, did God really tell you not to eat from the fruit? Next verse, yeah. And the woman said to the serpent, yeah. we may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden. Yeah, so the woman is telling, now, now who is guiding the person? Now who is guiding? This unknown friend. The friend whom we have not seen. I hope you are getting the message. Your life, which whom you should have control over, which whom you should be doing the things, now somebody else whom you really don't know who, how the person looks like is controlling your life now. And that person is telling you it is okay to eat the fruit. Amen. Be very careful how you get into touch with different people. If you don't know the person, be very careful to get in touch with the person. And not only that, if this Eve had come back and told Adam that I met a friend from outside the Garden of Eden, the problem would have been solved. But for some reason, what did, did she come and tell Adam that? No, she did not. Like, like many of us have Facebook friends, none of our friends are known by our spouses, right? <laughs> None of our friends are known by our spouses. And we don't know when this, this friend is going to create the problem. Right? If Eve had communicated that and told Adam about this friend, what would have happened is that when two people come together, they are very strong. Amen? It is not easy to break two people together. When you are alone, what happens is that Satan has more power over you. And Satan can mess up your lives. And that's what Satan does over here. Just because they were separated and they thought they could out-defeat Satan by words. You think that you can defeat Satan by words? No way. You know, Satan came to Jesus Christ and he tempted even Jesus Christ. And you know how he tempted Jesus Christ? He said, Satan said to Jesus, you know how, like I said before, Satan doesn't have the power to make us do anything. All he does is that talk behind us. See what happens, see how he is talking to Jesus. He's telling Jesus, take the stone, Jesus is asking for days. Take the stone, you make it to bread, and then you eat it. Hello Satan, what is your role in that? Right? If Satan is making the stone to bread and giving to Jesus, that makes some sense, right? But what is he doing? He's telling Jesus, you take the stone, you make it to bread, and you eat it. 
If God is a Satan, why did he mess up Jesus Christ? I never did anything. I tried. He did not do anything. He never can do anything. All he does is he comes from behind and he talks to us, confuses us, makes us make all the mistakes. I hope you understand. The same thing over here, what is happening is that Satan is talking to Eve continuously. And I believe this thing did not happen in one day, in one week, one month, not even a year. These things continue for a very long time. And you keep it a secret for a very long time. And then things get messed up. Amen? I hope, I, I, I believe, I'm talking to some people over here. There are some things when the Holy Spirit speaks to us, we need to correct ourselves. The word of God is given to us for what? Correction. In our lives when we need correction, God will speak to us. God speaks to us so that if there is any correction needed, we will correct it and get out of trouble. He comes and tells us. He speaks to us in different ways. When he speaks to us, take the word, receive the word, and get out of trouble. Don't fall prey to Satan. Amen. Let's continue. Let's read that. Yeah. But of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, yeah. God has said, you shall not eat it, Satan is asking, did you eat from the tree which is in the middle of the garden? Yeah. You shall not eat it. Yeah. Shall touch it. Yeah. And Eve, now she is strong because it's the beginning of the debate, right? Beginning of the debate, we are very strong. Oh, I, you know, I am a spiritual person. I don't do that. I don't do this. I don't do that. That's only the beginning. Remember, we are all humans, right? We are all humans. The beginning of a relationship is like that. But what happens gradually, things will change. Amen. Hallelujah. Continue. Yeah. Lest you die. If you eat from the tree, what will happen? You will die. But the thing is that, now Satan is going to confuse you. He's going to say that if you eat from the tree, you're going to become like God. Right? And if you become like God, can you die? Can God die? See? How smart, how smart Satan is? You get into a debate with Satan, don't think any of us will win because no way we can win because we know only a few verses from the Bible. Satan knows the whole Bible by heart. Amen? So don't even go there. <laughs> don't even get into a debate with Satan. And Satan said that you eat from the tree, what's going to happen? You will become like God. And if you become like God, can God die? He's saying, right, God cannot die. Let's continue. Yeah. Then the serpent said to the woman, Yeah. You will not surely die. You will not surely die. You eat from the fruit, you will not surely die. Yeah. For God knows that in the day you eat of it, See, now he's collecting and saying, the day you eat from the fruit, what is going to happen? Your eyes will be open. Your eyes will be open. Or you will curve like God. See? See how Satan is twisting the message which God has given to Adam and Eve. This is how Satan does his business. He twists the messages, he twists the things, and make you feel that what he's saying is right, even more right than what God has said to him, said to them very clearly, you eat from the tree, you will die. God said that plainly. Now Satan is twisting the whole thing and making them feel that if you eat it from eat from that tree, you're not going to die, you're going to become like who? God. Why do you want to become like God when you're already a child, son of God? I hope you understand. Praise the Lord. This is how Satan messes up. A family or even children like like if, uh, he, he would probably tell one of our uh, one friend will say to uh, one of our to my son just imagine I'm just telling you giving uh, tell your father to buy you a car and uh, my son is in high school so now he can start you know going to this thing and then and uh, <laughs> and the friend will say 
And I will tell him, no way, I'm not going to buy you a car. And then he will go back and tell the friend, my father said he's not going to buy me a car. Oh, really? Is he really your father? Yeah? Does he really love you? Why wouldn't he buy you a car? And every guy, every guy from your class is having a car. See? That guy can mess up the whole relationship between the father and son. Right? Now, the love factor will be determined on the basis of what? One silly car. Right? This is what happens. I just gave you a relationship with father and son. It can happen between a husband and a wife, and it can happen inside the family. This is how relation, somebody from outside can corrupt our mind. This is what Paul was saying. I am afraid. The same way the serpent beguiled Eve, that is the same thing that's going to happen to the church. Just imagine, in the first church, how many members were there? Two members. Adam and Eve, the first church. And today's church, how many members are here? See? Is, is, it, is it difficult for Satan to mess up the church? So easy, right? Many people with different minds and different thoughts. All Satan needs to do is get into one person's mind. Usually it starts by saying, Oh, pastor likes the other person more. Finish. Gone. Right? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Or mess up a choir team. Somebody will come and Brother Sudhakar likes only that person singing. Finish. The choir is gone. <laughs> right? It doesn't take much to mess up things. One wrong idea gets into somebody's head. Everything gets messed up. Everything was in harmony. Everything was going so good. They were living in the Garden of Eden. There were two believers, Adam and Eve. And God was there in their midst. But what happened? Suddenly, you are communicating with somebody who is not part of the church. Somebody from outside came and corrupted you by saying the wrong things. And you were listening all this time what the other people said you forgot. One word from somebody outside, now you don't have sleep at nights. Right? You're only thinking of that thing, what the other person said. I hope you're getting the message. Hallelujah. Let's go further. Yeah. And you will be like God. And you will be like God. Who is saying that you will be like God? It's the wrong person. You think Satan wants you to be like God? Satan wants you to be like him. Right? He doesn't want you to be like God. He wants you to mess up your life and he wants you to be like him. Thrown out from the Garden of Eden. Like he was thrown out from where? From the he heavenly realm. You know how many names Satan has? I don't have time. Go to Revelation and find that. I don't have time to go there. Hallelujah. He received all those names after he fell down in the sight of God. Yeah, if anybody falls down in the sight of God or man, you will get new, new names. Right? Right? Praise the Lord. What Satan wants is mess up your life. If you eat the fruit, you will become like what? God. No. You listen to Satan. You eat the fruit, you're not going to become like God. You're going to become like Satan. Let's continue. Yeah. Knowing good and evil. Yes, you will know good and evil, which God never intended man to know. God never wanted man to know the difference between good and evil. I will tell you why. In New Testament it said, unless you become like a child, what? In other words, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. So everybody seated over here should go, go do the reverse. Go back and become like a child or have a conscience like the child to enter the kingdom of God. Amen. I will give you an example. When my son and daughter, they were five years old, what happens is that I go out, I come up back home, my children come running to me. They just miss me because I'm gone outside. They come and they kiss me and all those things, you know, the love that is at the age of five. 
If I hit them, I get angry with them, still they will do what? Still they will love me. But now it's 10 years old. Now, if I kiss them in public, they say, Papa, what are you doing? What are you doing? What's wrong with you? Kissing me in public? Only 10 years ago. Not even more than that, just 10 years. Things have changed. Now he's 15 years old. Father is coming inside. Whatever. Right? Father came. All day out of out work and things like that comes back home. Yeah, sure. I know he comes and goes. Who cares, right? See the relationship changing? Why? When you are young, you don't have anything inside you but your parents. As you grow up, the world starts entering inside you. When the world starts coming inside you, you get the knowledge of good and evil. Then the conscience starts to awaken. And then the relationship between you and your parents starts to diminish. I hope you understand. And when your children become teenagers, your life becomes miserable as parents. Why? Because you have no idea how to satisfy them. And then you have a thing in between called generation gap, which they will keep constantly reminding you that you, my son will say, Papa, you don't know anything. I have no idea. I don't know anything. Because the things the way he knows, I don't know. And sometimes he says, you don't know, I don't even know to speak English properly. And I tell him that I'm not speaking American English, I'm speaking British English to get away. Because I came from India, right? You all know. <laughs> you know, to get by these children. See, the things are changing. Hallelujah. What I'm trying to tell you is, God never wanted us to know the difference between good and evil. He wanted us to be the five-year-old child always. Amen? Let's all give glory to God. Hallelujah. Always He wanted us to be like the small children so that we will unconditionally we will go to God and we will love Him. That's what God wanted. But the thing is that the whole equation changed. The whole thing changed. Yeah, continue reading. Yeah. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food... Yeah, see what happens. The woman which she... When she started the conversation with Satan, first thing, what did she say? Forget about eating it, you're not even allowed to touch it. But the conversation went for some long time. Like I said, don't get into communication with the devil. You cannot defeat him. And now, this woman has different ideas. Now what is she saying about the tree and the fruit? Read that once again. So the woman saw that the tree was good for How did she know the, the tree was good? Did she Google it or something? Hello? Did she get the information about the tree and the fruit from, from where did she get it? Now, which was not even allowed to touch it, is now the tree is Good for? Oh, as if she is starving in the garden of Eden, right? She has nothing to eat in the garden of Eden. Now she's saying what? This tree is good for food. See how things are changing? Then, yeah. And it was pleased to be eyes. Ah, it is good for the eyes. Then. And a tree desirable to make one wise. And this tree has all the vitamins to make you wise. See, she got all this information. God knows from where. Where did she get all this information from? From the serpent. From the serpent. Serpent convinced Eve all these good things in the fruit which God said you cannot eat. And I, like I said before, this is not start one day, one week, one month, one year. It must have gone for a very long time to convert Eve into that kind of a person. 
I hope you understand what I'm trying to tell you today. Be very careful with the friends that you make that you do not know. Let's continue. Yeah, then what happens? She took off his fruit and ate. Then she, what did she do? She took off the fruit and she ate. And then, what did she do? She also gave to her husband. Yeah, I think about Indian wives are, whatever they eat, they will give it to their husbands. And we will say, praise the Lord and we will eat it. Even if the salt is more, chili is more, spice is some more, no problem. We will thank God and eat because why? We need to eat tomorrow also, right? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Over here the same thing. What did she do? She ate it. She gave it to her husband. He also ate it without no complaints. But the problem is, the problem starts from there. Let's continue. Then the eyes of both of them were open. Yeah, as God said, their eyes were open. Now, they know the difference between two things. What is that? Good and evil, which God never wanted them to know. Yeah, continue. Yeah. And they knew that they were naked. And now, when you have these difference between good and evil comes inside you, now you have new emotions, new feelings. First thing they did was they knew what? They were naked. Till that time they did not know. A five-year-old child does not know that she is naked, right? But when you come to ten-year-olds, things change. Because the world comes inside and says, Oh, things are changing, right? That's the time when you can't even kiss them in public. Praise the Lord. And continue, yeah. And they sewed fig leaves together. And then they started, they put the first new suit. I believe that was the first fashion company which started. They did the fig leaves. They made a suit for themselves. Yeah. And made themselves coverings. Yeah. And they heard the sound of the Lord God. The thing about God is, God is an unchanging God. Amen. Amen. What that means is, when God says that two or more people gather in His name, what do they say? He will be present. When he says that, he means it. One of the two, if it's the messed up guy, do you think God is going to show? Will he? Yes, he will. If, even if the other guy is messed up, but if these two people have come here in the name of God, he will be present over there. Amen. That is why the word of God never changes. We have a God is an unchanging God. God knows Adam and Eve have messed up, right? Till yesterday, every day in the evening, what used to happen? There was a communication between God and Adam and Eve. Every day in the evening they had fellowship. Every day in the evening they had worship. Every day, just imagine God loved the fellowship between Adam and Eve. Every day in the evening he's there. Today he could have missed it because he knows they missed it. But do you think God will, will miss the meeting? No. He will never miss the meeting. He is there, like every day, coming there, acting like he, he does not know anything. Why? Because he loves each one of us. Amen. See what happens. Continue. Yeah. The Lord God walking in the garden. As usual, Adam and Eve are hearing the voice of God walking in the garden. Just imagine. Uh, they can see God, they can feel God, they can hear God. Yeah, continue. In the cool of the day. Yeah. And Adam and his wife hid themselves. Oh, just imagine. Whom are they hiding from? Whom are they hiding from? God. Many of us are like that. We come to church and they still get hiding. From God. Thinking God does not know anything what's happening in our lives. We are here, but not visible, right? Same thing over here. Adam and Eve, what are they doing? They are hiding themselves where? From the presence of the Lord God. Is it possible? Just imagine, any of us can any of us hide from the presence of God? 
Just because you messed up somewhere, do you think you can hide from God? Amen. No way. You cannot hide from God. See what happens. Continue. Yeah. From among the trees of the garden. Yeah. Then. Then the Lord God called to Adam and said to him. And God is calling Adam. That's the best part about these verses. God is, what is he doing? He's, because he loves them, what is he doing? He's calling Adam. Doesn't he know where they are? Of course he knows where they are. But the thing is, he loves them more. That's why he's calling them so that they will come out. They will confess. They will tell God, God, we made a mistake. We did something wrong. We did something that you told me not to do. It was as simple as that. He could have, the whole mess could have been stopped. But what happens? No. Continue. Yeah. Said to him, where are you? Yeah. So he said, I heard your voice in the garden. Yeah. And I was afraid because I was naked. See, when the eyes opened, I told you, you have new emotions and feelings. First emotion they had was that they were naked. Now the second new emotion has come out. What is that? Fear. Just imagine it. A child of God fearing God. God. They, before, they used to love God. The presence of God, they used to in, enjoy the presence of God. Every day in the evening, they would have fellowship together. And now, there's a new emotion that's come out. All fear. I was afraid. Continue, yeah. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Why, why is God asking that question? Because He loves you. He wants a confession out of you. When you come to the presence of God, you do something wrong, make sure to confess. Make sure to cry in the presence of God. Say sorry to God. Things. God is a forgiving God. Amen? God is a forgiving God. He knows we are dust. We make mistakes. He understands that. But the thing is that if you don't confess, you continue to give excuse after excuse after excuse, that's when things become really bad. Instead of blessing, then you start reaping curses from God. That's what is going to happen over here. Let's continue fast. I'm going to stop in five minutes. Have you eaten from the tree of See, fish? first God was asking, where are you? They could have confessed. Then, for the next question, who told you you were naked? They could have confessed. What is the next thing? Have you eaten? Have you eaten? See, he's getting to the point and asking, have you eaten? Even then they could have confessed. You think man will do that? The stubborn man? The hard-hearted man? Huh? Me? I did wrong? No way. Look at me, I'm wearing a new suit. Don't I look fit for the church? Right? I'm looking better than you. With everything wrong inside. Standing in the presence of God. Not opening up. Thinking everything is going to be fine. Sorry. You're standing in front of the God, the Almighty God. When you come over here, the first thing a child of God should learn to do is confess. Ask God for forgiveness for things that you do in your life because you are serving and worshipping a holy God. You are not fit to be seated in front of a holy God. If it was in the Old Testament, God is supposed to be called as consuming fire. You know what is the meaning of consuming fire? That is the character of God. If God had said something, and you have gone against the word of God, this, you know, fire doesn't look at what it's consuming, right? Anything in its way he consumes. The same manner, when you have done something wrong in the eyes of God, this consuming fire will come and consume each and everybody. I hope you understand what I'm saying. You cannot sit and stand in the presence of God, which is the consuming fire, and get away by giving excuses. Amen. But God has another quality of God. He is a loving God. He is a gracious God. Yeah, continue. Yeah. Then the man said, yeah. The woman whom you gave to be with Instead of giving, saying, Yes, God, I did it. What is he saying? Blaming. Whom is he blaming now? Whom? The woman? No. He is not blaming the woman. He is blaming God for giving him the woman. He is 
not blaming the woman. He's saying, because you gave me the woman, now I have sinned. Right? If you had not given me this woman, I was doing fine in the garden of Eden. Right? Yeah, continue. Yeah. The woman whom you gave to me with the me. The woman whom you gave to me. With me. Yeah. She gave me of the tree. She gave me the fruit. Yeah. And I ate. And I ate it. Right? Isn't that what I'm supposed to do? Whatever the woman gives me, I'm supposed to eat it, right? Let's continue, yeah. And the Lord God says to the woman, Yes, now God is asking the woman, yeah. What is this you have done? What is this you have done, yeah. The woman said, The serpent deceived me See? and I ate. This is where things change. The woman is saying, What? Man could have confessed. When the woman, she could have confessed. And anybody confessing over here? There's no confession. See? All giving excuses. This, that, this, that. But the problem is the moment the woman opened and said about the serpent, everything changed. The serpent was not part of the Garden of Eden. The serpent was thrown from the heavenly realms because of what he had done. And now this woman, instead of obeying God, this man, instead of obeying God, they obeyed who? The servant. The moment God heard that, every day in the evening, when man and God come together, there is blessings. When there is worship, there is blessings. But today, instead of blessings, what is going to happen? Curse is ever to come. God is there, Adam is there, Eve is there. Every day it was blessing in the evening. But today, things have changed. Because you could not confess yourself to God. Instead of blessings, one curse after the other, you're going to raise the curses. And I'm going to stop over here. See what happens. So the Lord God said to the serpent, yeah. Because you have done this, yes. you are cursed more than all cattle. First God curses who? The serpent. I'll go fast. Yeah, continue. And more than every beast of the field. Yeah, this, this serpent who was probably walking on two legs, God said, no more. Are you going to crawl? You're going to eat the dust. Yeah, continue. On your belly you shall go and yes. eat dust. All Only from days. that point onwards, the serpent, everything changed. Now you're going to crawl on the ground. Yeah. And I will put enmity between you and the woman. And Even though curse was there, within the curse, God put a blessing over there. I hope you understand. There was a blessing in between. What is the blessing over there? I, I will put an enemy between. You and the woman. You and the woman. And between your seed and her And seed. your seed and? Her seed. Her seed. It's never her seed. Woman doesn't have seed, right? Does woman have seed? No, it is man who has seed. But over here it is said, her seed. Why? Because there is going to be a woman who is going to have seed not from man but from the Holy Spirit. She will conceive and have a child and the child Jesus is going to crush the head of the serpent. Amen. Let's continue. Yeah. He shall bruise your head. He shall bruise your head. And you shall bruise his heel. Yes. To the woman he said. <laughs> now the curse is, see, every day it was blessings. Today curse after curse. Curse who's cursed? The serpent is cursed. Now the woman is going to be cursed. Yeah. I will greatly multiply your sorrow. I will greatly multiply your sorrow. Every, you know, woman always sorrow after sorrow, right? Everything else, always crying, always crying, right? Always either crying for the husband or crying for the children. The woman always have one thing, what? Tears. Praise the Lord. It's not your fault. It was given to you. Praise the Lord. So what is happening? I will multiply your sorrows. So the sorrows is not going to go away. It just keeps multiplying. The more you cry, the more you have to cry. Right? I'm sorry. It's just the way it is. Continue. Yeah. And your conception. Uh-huh. In pain you shall bring forth children. Yeah. In pain you will bring forth children. Yeah. Your desire shall be for your husband. Okay. This part is very complicated. Many people in America don't like to hear. Let's hear this clearly. What is that? Your, your desire shall be for your husband. husband and he shall rule over you. Oh yeah, no way. No husband is ruling me, right? 
Yeah, sure. My husband ruling me, not happening. I earn more than my husband. No way, that's happening. My house, my wife earns more than me. So, <laughs> but the thing is, it's part of the curse. I hope you get that. I'm going to stop over there. I'm going to go further because you might throw me out of here. Continue, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then to Adam he said. Then to Adam. First it was a serpent that went to Eve, now to Adam. Yeah. Because you have heeded the voice of your wife. Speak. See? That means don't always listen to the voice of your wife. Uh, I don't know. Please. I don't want to create any family problems. If God is saying, because you listen to the voice of your wife, what is going to happen? And have eaten from the tree of which I commanded you. Yes. Saying, you shall not eat of it. Yeah. Cursed is the ground for your sake. So, because of that, the earth is cursed. That is why we tell everybody, especially our children, to pray before you eat. Why? Why do we tell our children to pray before you eat? Why? Because you're eating from the cursed land. Cursed earth. Anything that you eat, that the more tastier it is, the more chances of you getting sick, right? Right? Why? Because this earth is cursed. So what we do is that we bless the food that is always in front of us. Every time you eat food, what do you need to do? Don't jump on the food. Wait a minute. Bless the food. Give thanks for the food. And then we eat so that the curse will not go inside you and create diseases, but we need your blessing and health for your body. Amen? Let's continue. Yeah. In toil you shall eat of it. Yeah, you will work hard and then you will eat from it. Yeah, but. All the days of your life. Yeah, all the days man has to work hard. Yeah, continue. Yeah. Both thorns and thistles it shall be. You will be working hard all days of your life. What is coming out is what? Thorns and thistles. See why many of our credit cards are not being paid out. That's why. I don't want to go there. Yeah, continue. Yeah, thorns and thistles. Yeah. And you shall eat the herb of the field. Yes. In the sweat of your face you shall eat bread. Yeah. Till you return to the ground. Yeah. For out of it you are taken, for dust you are, and to dust you okay, shall I'm return. See, this is what who was afraid. Paul was afraid. Paul is saying, I fear what happened in the Garden of Eden. And there were two believers in the Garden of Eden. How the serpent came and messed up the whole thing over there. And eventually they got kicked out of the Garden of Eden. They lost all the powers which they had. The same thing would happen to the church. That's what Paul is afraid. If he could mess up two people, how much more can he mess up each and every body seated over here? Be very careful, Paul is saying. He is a man who is so strong, he is not afraid of death. He is not afraid of hunger. He is not afraid of thirst. He is not afraid of nakedness. He is not afraid of sword. He is not afraid of nothing. But he is afraid that this serpent which messed up the Garden of Eden will come and mess up your lives. But he is praying, God, don't allow that to happen. May the Almighty God bless us with you.